Hey folks, squat mistakes that are super common and how to fix them, who better to teach us than Charlie Jung, my friend and training partner at Charlton Banks on Instagram. Follow him if you like gigantic Koreans. Our first mistake is not doing enough range of motion. It may be the most common mistake in squatting all around the world and gyms everywhere. Some folks will squat like this, but they'll do a squat. Go ahead and hit it, Charlie. And uh, you know, they'll decide at some arbitrary point is good enough because to quote our friend, Michael Zendelovich, what is down there in a deep squat that I wanna know so much so badly? Here's the thing, hypertrophy's down there. Stretching the quads helps them grow. Going through a full range of motion not only grows the quads, but the glutes and adductors, so on and so forth. And you can use less load. Everything good comes from squatting super deep. We'll talk about in the next mistake what too deep is, but for now, one of the biggest fixes to this is literally just a determination to go low. A lot of people, everything's fine with their stance. Everything's fine with their mechanics. They're just arbitrarily cutting depth. So Charlie, stop arbitrarily cutting depth and go ahead and squat to a nice depth. Boom, that's it. Now all of a sudden he's going low. We didn't even have to make any adjustments. We'll get to the adjustments in the next tip. In our quest to go super deep and sometimes not even, we encounter a big mistake, which is rounding the lower back being super lordotic or bent over in the lower back probably doesn't do anything good for injury risk, but a lot of times, one of the even worse possibilities is that it reduces your ability to produce force through the quads, the back becomes a limiting factor, which is not super good. So Charlie, go ahead and give us a deep squat, but really round over at the bottom like some folks do. Yay, super rounded over. That's not awesome for both of the reasons that I just said. How do we fix this? A lot of times what's required is not getting into super anterior pelvic tilt like I like to do with my squats, which is fine by the way, you don't have to do this, but you should at least have your spine relatively straight, brace nice and tight, keep your chest not necessarily super up, but don't let it cave forward. Again, it's just a matter of knowing these are the priorities. Remember, at the bottom of a deep squat, gravity and body mechanics want you to fold over on yourself. Just don't do it. Resist by maintaining upright posture. Charlie, give us a hint at what that looks like. So instead of rounding, he's going to have his chest up. He's going to have his back either neutral or in a slight uh, lordosis, and everything is super good just like that. In our quest to try to go low and hit the quads, sometimes we can have this other mistake happen, which is the heels coming up off the ground. Why is that bad? It's dangerous because it makes you wildly unstable, and if you've got plenty of weight on yourself, you don't wanna be super unstable. Also, because of that instability, it usually makes your central nervous system reduce the amount of force output to the actual legs and the quads themselves. So if you go on your tippy toes at the bottom of a squat, not only are you enhancing injury risk, you're actually reducing the effectiveness of the exercise. Charlie, give us a, a demo of what that looks like. Trying to go low and you end up going on your tippy toes. So yeah, and then whoop, and it always looks exactly as bad as it is. You ever seen this in the gym? It's weird, okay? How do you fix it? Well, an interesting cue to use is, remember, we don't wanna do a super equipped powerlifting squat where we sit back much more than we sit down, but maybe pushing your hips back while unlocking your knees, instead of just unlocking your knees and going down, is a good cue to use here. So when you think of squatting, think of going a little bit back and then plenty down, and think of actively staying on your whole foot, heels, and toes instead of just thinking I have to go down and it's gonna result in going forward. So Charlie, go ahead and tilt back a little bit like usual, sits back and down, everything's really good. A lot of times, another fix to this is pausing at the bottom of a squat. So Charlie, go ahead and get on your toes a little bit for us and then sit down to the bottom of the squat and pause. Okay, and then I'll just tell him if I'm his coach, okay, now settle into a comfortable seating position. Boom, and automatically he goes down. Now, if his back is tight, we just fix the problem. Go ahead and come up, Charlie. So a big solution to this potentially, if you're working with clients or even yourself, is if they go on their toes all the time, have them pause at the bottom and tell them, we're gonna pause and I want you to get on your heels when we pause. Every time they might start weird, they're gonna fix it and sit on their heels and eventually they're gonna pause. Everything is gonna look super good. You can move away from pauses if you like and get back to normal regular squatting. The next mistake is squatting too low. What the hell, I thought acid grass was the way to go, brother. Well, check this out, brother. 
if we cannot possibly, due to hip structure, flexibility, or what have you, maintain good positioning all the way to super extra credit bottom, there's no reason to do it. It turns out that range of motion, you get partial credit for every bit of range of motion you do. And if you're doing a nice solid squat that's below parallel, man, you're doing a great job. You don't have to sink it in. Now, sinking in it has great advantages only if you can do it safely and properly. So Charlie might have an excellent squat to just below parallel, right? So go ahead and show off what that looks like. I mean, look, that's a good squat. Is he going all the way down ass to grass? No, but it looks fine. Spinal position's fine. Notice he's on his heels and toes. He might like watch a YouTube video and say, fuck, I have to go all the way down now, I'm a piece of shit. He goes all the way down, and where is that extra range of motion coming from? The lower back was stressed around, and he's going on his toes. Now, can we fix those issues independently? Sometimes, a lot of times. But if we can't, then there's just a point at which the hips tilt, and you get on your toes because you just lack the ankle mobility, so on and so forth, just go as low as you can before that happens so you have good, good, good squats. Eventually, as you squat more and more, and we'll talk about this later, but you might find a better foot position, play with a bunch of stuff, body position, you may, and just out of sheer flexibility increase, eventually squat lower and lower and lower until you're squatting ass to grass and everything looks fine. But you don't want to rush that process, let it take its time. The next mistake is not bracing properly, especially when you're lifting a lot of weight. If you brace wrong or you don't brace at all, it ends up making your core your limiting factor, not allowing their legs to express their strength as much, not taxing the quadriceps and other leg muscles as much as they could be, and that prevents you from getting the most out of the exercise. So some people, and I've actually even seen this instructed, will say, <laughs> this is, it's funny to even say, breathe out on the way down. Kind of ridiculous. Charlie, why don't you give that one a try? lose all your air, and then you collapse into a black hole of death and suffering. You don't want that. A good way to brace for powerlifting squats is to make sure you take a huge breath in, <gasps> tighten your whole core, make sure your core is vertical, not too lordotic, not too kyphotic, and you don't wanna have your chest come up too much because that's a leverage disadvantage. But this isn't powerlifting, and that much bracing takes a lot of energy. All you wanna do is make sure you breathe in, <gasps> Tighten your abdominal muscles just to some extent at least and stay nice and upright, focusing on keeping your core tight and focusing it to make sure it's not wobbly. So go ahead and uh, give us a, a look at what that looks like, Charlie. Breathe in, squat up, and breathe out. Fundamentally, you wanna be breathing in only at the top before you descend, and you wanna breathe out towards the last half of the movement, potentially, or even just breathe out at the very top. You don't wanna be breathing in as you go down and out from the very bottom. One thing that can happen if you reach a grinder rep, Charlie, get to the bottom and then start breathing out as you come up and then your rep will slow down because it's a grinder. Oh, he's out of air and now he's collapsing, right? So breathe in, squat, and towards the very top, breathe out and do it again. In bodybuilding, this minimal bracing allows you to be safe, effective, and to get rep after rep after rep. The opposite problem of that, and this happens a lot from folks transitioning or concurrently competing in powerlifting, is overbracing. Folks, these are hypertrophy squats. That means they're done for reps of at least five to 10, sometimes 10 to 15 or even more. You don't wanna brace so much that the bracing is designed to protect you and maximize e efficacy at 70 uh, or 90% plus loads but there's no purpose for doing that. And it actually literally takes systemic energy away from stimulating your quads. You don't wanna spend a ton of time at the top of each rep bracing. Charlie, show us a super brace for every single different squat. So first brace, go ahead and hit it. Overdo the shit out of it. Boom, he's locked in. Yeah, buddy. All right, all right, you got it. You got it. And come up. Yeah, all right, rebrace. Okay, hit it again. Yep, stomach down and all that other stuff. Cool, yeah, he's gonna do like three or four reps, good enough. He's gonna do three or four reps really well like that. That is not a way to have the quads be the limiting factor. Your whole body's gonna run out of energy before you get to it. So show us the right way, just a breath in, tighten, and go. So he's gonna breathe in, tighten up, come back, breathe in again, tighten up, come back, no big deal. Overbracing looks cool as shit. Everyone thinks you know what you're doing, but you're really just pissing away energy, training your transverse abdominis and not your quads. The next mistake is an uncontrolled eccentric. Charlie, show us what that looks like really quick. Boink, and you come up, and you fall down. What is that called? Dive bombing your squats. 
Yep, good enough for now. That scares me just looking at it. Is there a huge risk of injury from dive bombing or squats? No, not really. Your body's actually quite sturdy, but it's a little bigger than we want, especially as the weight gets really high. But there's a really legit risk of something much worse than injury, not growing as much muscle as possible per rep. Remember, the eccentric phase of muscle contraction, the lengthening phase, is very hypertrophic and is very necessary. You are not here to just get reps. You are here to tax the musculature and reps are just a measurement. So when we do reps in the squat, we don't have to go four seconds or five seconds down. If you want, that's a cool variation. We don't even have to pause at the bottom. If you want, that's a cool variation, but we wanna control the way down. Show us what a basic minimum of control looks like, Charlie. Controlled and then up. Notice he controls the entire time on the way down and up, perfect. That means we're staying safe and our quads are active during the lengthening, which means they're contracting eccentrically, which is awesome for more muscle growth. The next mistake is not having a standardized repetition depth or cadence to your squats. Sometimes you go super low, sometimes you don't, and it's kind of like by feel every single rep. Motherfucker, what are you feeling every single rep? You should have a rep standard that works really well for you and you check every single box. Now, here's the deal. If you're one of those folks like we talked about earlier who just goes below parallel, that's totally good, but you gotta hit below parallel every single time. Here's what you don't wanna do. Go ahead and Charlie, show us a clusterfuck. So, you know, we're doing squats, right? That was something cool, maybe he'll do it again. JK, he did a full squat that time. Maybe he'll do a full squat again. Ah, no, something felt off, right? <laughs> Good enough. What we want is for every squat to look essentially very, very similar. Not identical, but you should at least be trying to go to objective landmarks. Charlie knows when a squat is full because he's a full depth squatter. So he just squats until his ass touches his calves. Charlie hit it all the way down. You can't go any further than that. Now, if you are someone who squats to just below parallel, Charlie, show us what a standardized below parallel squat looks like. He might squat like this, yep, and he comes up, and notice his next squat is gonna be exactly the same, and comes up, and look, if you need someone to tell you when you're low enough, that's fine, hold yourself to a standard. This both allows you to get as much muscle growth out of every rep as you can, and allows you to standardize your performance. You know when you're getting stronger on the squat, you know when your muscles are getting bigger because you're getting stronger for reps, and you know when you haven't or have hit your maximum recoverable volume. Next mistake is doing low bar squatting. What the hell, low bar is not a mistake. Low bar is an excellent way for folks that are flexible enough to be competitive in powerlifting and lift the most weight. We are not here to do that. We are here to enhance lower body, specifically quadricep hypertrophy. Low bar leverage us actually to use a bit more of our glutes, a bit more of our back, a bit more of our hamstrings, as well as our quads. That means the stimulus to fatigue ratio for the quads goes down because we can use more weight and more of our body we don't use our glutes and hamstrings enough really to stimulate them much more or our back. We just use it to lift more weight. That causes lots of systemic fatigue. It's now a much more fatiguing exercise when it's low bar because you're using more weight. You can't get as much of a stretch on the quads at the bottom. You end up lifting more weight, but getting less out of the exercise. That's terrible. What we wanna do is high bar position in almost all cases. That means you can stay more upright. Your quads are much more limiting factor and per the amount of fatigue cost we pay, we get the most stimulus. So here's what low bar looks like. You know, low bar setup, doesn't matter where you put your hands, it's gonna end up being basically right on your rear delts underneath the top meat of your traps. That's cool, it might even feel good, but it's not the best for hypertrophy. For hypertrophy, we wanna move down a little bit so that we have the bar right on top of our upper traps, and in this case, Charlie's ridiculous traps, it doesn't even touch his shoulders. That is a really good squat. That's the position you wanna be to get the most out of your hypertrophy squat for your quads. This isn't so much a mistake, but something that might happen to you in your squatting journey. What if the squat hurts your neck or your shoulders to actually put the bar on your back? The thing is, first of all, if it doesn't hurt a ton, nut up, you'll get used to it. If you're new to squatting and you're not super strong or super muscular yet, it's gonna get better and better and better. So if it's just a little bit uncomfortable, you'll be totally fine. However, for some people, based on a variety of things where their bones are positioned, uh, some anatomical differences, squatting without some kind of protective pad actually does hurt all the time and prevents them from getting a good squat. Some people say use the safety squat bar. That's a totally fine solution. Also, don't be afraid to use the squat condom as I've heard it called, something to wrap around. That's totally fine. Eventually, however, you're probably gonna go traps, maybe not as big as Charlie's, maybe bigger, and he's got his own bar pad. Go ahead and show us what that looks like. Charlie's gonna get under the bar. 
Guess what? Guess why his spine isn't even touching the bar? Because these things, what the fuck are those? Folks, eventually you're gonna get jacked enough, you don't need a bar pad, but if you happen to be in a special situation and you happen to be a person for whom it's really debilitating pain, don't worry about what people say. It's okay to use the bar pad. You're not in the gym to try to pretend you're tough to other people that comment on you. Fuck those people. Use the bar pad if you like. Put it on the squat, but when you don't need it anymore or you can wean yourself off of it, you'll be more stable and you'll be well on your way. Next mistake is over obsessing or under obsessing about where to look, where to put your head and where to put your eyes. Here's the real deal. There are two no-nos of where to look and they all essentially result in the same thing. One is to try to look straight down at your own dick or whatever's down there. If you look straight down on the squat, a lot of times it just rounds you over and worse, it can put you off balance. The next place you don't wanna look is completely straight up vertical behind you. What the fuck is back there you wanna see so bad? If you wanna see it bad enough, rack the bar and turn the fuck around. Again, it's not a problem on a theoretical level, it's just gonna cause you to lose balance. Here's the thing, people say looking up too much or down too much is gonna hurt your neck. That's the dumbest fucking pile of bullshit I've ever heard. Where the fuck is the force transduction here? Force transduces below the neck. If you think that you could hurt your neck looking up in the squat, don't ever go to New York City and look at skyscrapers. Your dumb ass will hurt your neck just looking up. It's the same amount of force. That being said, looking up can throw you off balance. Looking down so far can. Where should you look? Wherever is comfy and you have balance. Charlie, where do you like to look? Show us where you like to look. Right there is fine. Some people like to look at sort of something out on the bottom of the floor, a couple feet out from them, they look down like that. This is totally fine. Everything's cool as long as you're not looking super far down or super far up and your balance is being thrown off. Next mistake is going too wide or too narrow. And that involves which way you point your feet as well. Here's the thing. We have a really easy checklist to find out if we're going too wide or too narrow. Can we get a relatively full range of motion? Can we do it without lower back rounding or without our toes coming up? And do we feel the movement a ton in our quads as the limiting factor? For example, Charlie, do a really wide stance squat with your toes pointed out. Charlie can actually get relatively deep in this, relatively safely, go ahead and uh, sink it down for us. Yeah, that looks just fine, but what he might do is after a set or two of that, we'll say, hey, do you feel that in your quads a lot? He'd be like, you know what? I feel it in my adductors a ton. Thing is, we don't do squats for adductors. We can do sumo deadlifts for those, Funny thing is, we can even do sumo squats for them, but then it's not the quad hypertrophy squat for bodybuilding, it's a sumo squat for adductors and glutes. Different video, different exercise, right? So if you feel it a ton in your quads, they're the limiting factor. If your heels are on the ground and your toes are on the ground, and if your lower back is at least neutral and possibly arched a little bit, any width is totally fine. That means we can squat really sort of narrow stance. And Char Charlie, show us what that looks like. Right, narrow stance squats totally fine. And here's the deal, if your knees feel totally fine and your hips feel fine, you can even point your toes completely forward and you're 100%. People say, hey, where should I point my toes? There's an easy answer there. Are you getting full range of motion? They say, they say yes. Are you feeling it a ton of your quads and not a ton everywhere else? Yes. Does anything feel weird at a joint perspective? Do your ankles hurt? Do your knees hurt? Do your hips hurt? They'll say no. Well, then it's 100% fine. And remember, a close stand squat, a moderate stand squat, and anything in between is totally cool. You can even vary them as different movements. There is no dogma here as long as you feel it a ton of your quads, you're not being limited by anything else, there's not a ton of joint pain going on versus some other positions, and you're able to maintain a tight lower back and go to depth while your heels stay on the ground. That's it. Next problem is too much forward lean in a squat. Too much lean by itself isn't a bad thing, but what it can do is make your posterior chain, including your lower back, the limiting factor and not your quads, which means every time you get to, let's say one rep in reserve, which is a really solid set, it's not actually one rep in reserve in your quads, it's one rep in reserve in your posterior chain, but not exactly why we showed up to squat. We could have been doing deadlifts, glute ham raises, and a bunch of other stuff. So a lot of times this can be a solved problem with just a couple of corrections. It occurs really often in people not like myself or Charlie that have really long femurs and really short torsos. Okay, and a lot of times they're not making the proper adjustments. So Charlie, maybe somebody told him this is how Tom Platt squats, so should you sit back and down, go ahead and hit it. And he's trying to squat for his quads. All of a sudden he's sitting real far back. He's not even getting a ton of range of motion anymore. His back is rounding. He's leaned too far forward. His knees are too far back. Not a good thing. So the first thing you wanna do is abandon the idea that knees passing over your toes is a bad thing. If 
when you descend in the squat, when you begin the descent, if you break at your hips first, or you break at your hips and knees at the same time, and you don't break at your knees first, you're not going to experience any deleterious effects on your knees by letting them come in front of your toes. As long as you break at your hips and knees at the same time, or even your hips first, if the knees cross over the toes later, that's absolutely fine. Now that we've thrown that idea out, even this weird stance might work better for Charlie when he actually allows his quads to go forward. So even with this weird stance, give it a shot, let your knees travel forward as they have to. I mean, that's looking a lot better. Much less forward lean, probably more for the, uh, for the quads. Here's the thing, go ahead and come up. If you have a really short torso and long femurs, you, you can also shorten your apparent lever arm by instead of having a stance like this, having a wider stance and letting your knees come far out. This can let you stay more upright, let you get a bigger depth, let you get more of a quad hit. As long as your adductor is not a limiting factor, this works super well. So take a wider stance, Charlie. Notice he's pointing his toes out a little bit more and go ahead and do a squat. He's gonna keep nice and upright. He's letting his knees come forward. And all of a sudden, that's a great squat without too much forward lean. Perfect, experiment with what works for you. Don't be afraid to have your knees cross your toes and don't be afraid to squat a little wider. Maintain that upright posture and you might find that you don't lean too much and your quads get an awesome hit. The next mistake is essentially doing a couple of things that could prevent you from feeling your squat in the quads a ton, all right? We're squatting in order to train the quads so we don't wanna do anything positionally to throw that off. Now here's the thing. If Charlie, and this is a real big deal, if Charlie decides he wants to squat as much weight as possible, what he's going to do is probably sit back a bit more and down a bit less. Go ahead and show us what that looks like. His knees aren't gonna come forward a ton, and even at the bottom, he's gonna be sitting pretty far back. Oh sure, that'll put the pounds on the bar, but unfortunately, we're actually moving away from targeting our quads. If you wanna really feel your quads, starting with a pause at the bottom is really good, break at the hips and knees, and then let most of the rest of the bend come from your knees, sit into your quads. Just like if you're extending your tricep, you don't wanna take your tricep out this way, you wanna let the elbow break and you sit into your tricep, force all the tension into it. Same idea with the squat and the quads. Go ahead and show us what that looks like. So he's gonna break, and then he's gonna sit straight down into his quads. Yes, that will shift the center of pressure in your feet a little bit forward. As long as your heels are down, that's still super good. Give us a paused version for a second. You know how to do this right. If you can pause it and literally let your knees slide forward, stay upright, and after the pause, you're gonna know where the quads are best stimulated. Another cool tool to use is a bit of a slow eccentric. You don't have to show it off. If you can slow down your eccentric phase, when you're sitting back too much, you're like, nope, nope, this isn't quads anymore. Sit forward, you're like, yes, that's quads. Don't rush the squat, get in tune with your quads and make sure on the way down, you're feeling them a ton. On the way up, they take care of themselves just fine. Next mistake, and the last big mistake, is going too heavy or too light in your squats. Too heavy in your squats is less than five reps. It's cool, it's awesome, but unfortunately, it doesn't provide the volume per set that we need in order to grow the quads the best. And also weight that that's, he that's that heavy, sometimes it's very difficult to form a mind-muscle connection and make sure you're providing tension through most of the quads. It's kind of gonna be a whole body effort at that point. Cool, but the systemic fatigue is super high and the local stimulus to the quads as a ratio may not be good enough. Charlie here, is an 800 pound squatter in competition. But when he transitioned to bodybuilding just recently, we took all of his squats, stopped doing them in the, in the one to five rep range, which he was doing a ton of, and started doing them in the five to 15 rep range. That's heavy, especially five to 10, but provides enough reps to get bigger quads. And guess what? He doesn't squat 800 pounds anymore. He wouldn't be able to do that for a few months because he's nowhere near peaked, but his quads are bigger than ever because of those reps. Don't be afraid to do reps. Stop being addicted to super heavy weight if quad size is priority number one. Now, notice I said five to 15 reps. Why don't we do reps over 15 in the squat? Because you're bracing and you gotta brace somewhat, your systemic ability to hold yourself upright and breathe between reps, it's now cardio work or it's spinal stabilization work, your quads are no longer the limiting factor. It's training in the 15 to 30 rep range for quads, it's fucking awesome. Best reserve for the hack squat, especially the leg press, and definitely the leg extension. 
try sets of roughly 25 reps in the leg press, we should have a disclaimer here, don't die. You're gonna get fucked up beyond all recognition. It's gonna be awesome. But if you do that for squats, yeah, your quads will take a hit just because of novelty, but you'll mostly just be doing cardio work. It's brutal, but not the way we want it. So keep your squats five to 15 rep range, even in just the five to 10 is fine, and let the other accessory work do the higher reps for you. Folks, that's all we have for today. Remember, follow your stimulus to fatigue ratio clues. Make sure you're squatting in a way that stimulates your quads a ton. Tension, metabolite burn, pump after training. A huge pump in the quads is a sign you're doing something right. And disruption. If you're wobbly on the stairs after a good squatting workout, that means you hit your quads really well. Minimize joint pain, minimize systemic fatigue, try to go for full range of motion. And the best way you know how, you'll get quads bigger than Charlie's or our money back. 100% bullshit guarantee. See you next time. Great posterior chain train, great posterior train, good God. Great posterior chain training.